everyone, I'm Colleen Para, and welcome to Pius Talk. This is our weekly show at St. Pius the 10th Catholic Church in Tucson, Arizona. And this is for all of our parishioners, but not just our parishioners, for your family and friends, so spread the news. And everybody has a story to tell, just like I make Cortez, who is here with me today. And we are each week going to talk to somebody who, there he is, shares their life with us. And um, Jaime is the man behind the music. As a matter of fact, some of the songs that we sing at St. Pius, he composed them. He is a popular composer, arranger, and performer. I feel like I'm, I'm like among royalty right now. This is great, Jaime. I'm very fortunate to be with you today, even though we're uh, on a Zoom. We're not in person, and someday I'll look forward to meeting you. You are also the Director of Liturgy and Music at Our Lady of Perpetual Health in Scottsdale, and um, born in New York, raised in El Salvador, and the hot news today is you just released a new CD. So let's talk about that first. Hi, Colleen. Nice to be with you, and hello to everybody at uh, it's Pious Talk. Is that what is that show? It's called? Pious Talk. Pious Talk is wonderful uh, name, so it's really cool. Uh, glad to be with all everybody at Pious Talk, and hello to Tucson, Arizona, and all the listeners all across the country. So glad to be here. The, yes, a new CD, a new collection. You know, sometimes we call them CDs, sometimes collections. I used to even, I remember when we called them, I have a new album, but you know, yeah. now <laughs> nobody knows what an album is. No, a few people have CD players now, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but I still, uh, rele I'm releasing a CD. Uh, it is called Pueblo Unido, People United. Uh, and it is a, a collection of songs that are in bilingual form, a lot of them, or some are just in Spanish, some in English, but the majority of them are in, in bilingual form that are to assist uh, uh, churches that have uh, communities that speak in English and speak in Spanish. And, um, and mainly, you know, songs that for worship, they're usually for liturgy, for mass, and they're so that when people are together, they have an opportunity to worship and sing together uh, as one body. Now, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, how old were you when you figured out that you had some musical talent? You know, as as far as I can remember, you know, I, I, I know that my, my parents talk about, and my mom has told me stories about when I was like an infant standing in, in the crib, uh, whenever she would play music and the music would stop, in those days it was records, you know, so when that record would stop, <laughs> Uh, I would get upset, you know, and that sort of thing. But uh, my my mom and dad say that my, my dad taught me how to use the record player when I was very, very young. I don't remember that. So I, I it could have been three or four years old. And I, I know that they say that I broke a lot of records at the beginning. But, you know, when I, as as far as I go back in memory, I already could operate the record player. This was in the mid 60s, you know, so uh, the Beatles had just arrived in New York. You know, we I was in New York with my parents, so Flushing Meadow Park and Shea Stadium is literally like a five minute drive where, where, you know, so when the Beatles came to Shea Stadium, you know, we were in that middle of that fever and everything. And although I was really little, but my parents, you know, were really into it and all that. So so that that um I, I remember operating records and playing Beatle records and I, I can still see myself going through the records, you know, Elvis and the Army. Um, and also in the 60s, you mixed a lot of things so that we also had Herb Albert and we had Frank Sinatra. I remember there's a Capitol record uh, from Frank Sinatra called This is Sinatra that was just beautiful. It had wonderful stuff. A Nat King Cole. Um, um, Mantovani, you know, which was instrumental music. So I, I, I remember Edie Gourmet Los, in Los Panchos, which is a really famous album now. Mm -hmm. and one of the most successful albums ever to sell in the United States. We had that album, you know, and so I remember that too. So it was a mix of things, but I remember playing all those and, and standing in front of the record player and staring at it. It wasn't like I played records and went to play. I was in front of the album, looking at the notes or the pictures and listening. And um, so I can I can remember learning how to sing harmony parts when I was very little, five, oh, six wow. years old. Uh, and then at seven, I received my first guitar. I, I do remember having pictures in my seventh birthday with my first guitar. Yeah, so. And how many instruments can you play? Well, you know, I, I play a lot of string instruments. So I know how to play. My main instrument is guitar. So I, I've studied guitar and I, I play guitar. But I, you know, but... Um, 
for example, I can play bass guitar, I can play charango, I can play vihuela, I can play banjo a little bit, a little bit of mandolin. Uh, so, you know, a, a lot of the string instruments and they're a little bit slightly different, I play them all. Now I can play piano, of course. Uh, so those are basically the most, the main ones that I play. Okay. Now, tell me a little bit about your walk with Christ and how your musical talent played a role in all of that. Um, I remember, uh, well, the, uh, when I when I started, uh, when I was in fourth grade, there was auditions for what, the, the, in, in, in El, I was in El Salvador by then, mm -hmm. we had already moved back to El Salvador. We grew up in, I, I was born in New York City, my parents were working there, my mom was working in the United Nations, but at a certain point, uh, we, they, you know, they moved back to El Salvador and I was about six or seven. And I, had, I have a brother that also was five or four or five. And we moved back and so I started going to elementary school in El Salvador. And so there in fourth grade, they had auditions for what they called the soloists. What that meant really was people who had enough talent to carry a tune and to be set aside in the masses and the school masses, this is in a Catholic school, uh, to be the, the school choir, really, you know, that's what I was. So I auditioned and made it easily into the school choir. Mm -hmm. I remember singing harmonies in those two. And uh, uh, did a lot of music singing for my entire life of the school there. You know, the, my school really had the elementary and the junior high and the high school all in one building. So on, all the way up to 12th grade, I, I played music. And uh, sometime in the last couple of years, we were also allowed to play guitars and do some things, you know, with, a, with as a group. And I played in those two. And from there, I, when I moved to college, and there was a long story how I ended up in Arizona, but let's skip that for now and say, when I went to Arizona for my first year of college, somebody took me to the All Saints Catholic Newman Center. Oh. And I went there and wow, you know, all the students are playing guitars and basses and pianos and they're singing. And I felt very attracted to that so i asked how can i get into one of the groups and they said well you know we have to do this and that we need a bass player and i said i can play bass and i went ran over and we got a bass guitar from the store and uh in tempe and then i started playing bass guitar and so that's kind of that kind of introduced me to the playing into a music group here in, in the united states little by little i started going hmm who does the choosing of this music what's a holy holy how does that come into it, who you know organizes this so i started inquiring a lot and there was a couple of really great mentors you know mentored people who who said oh you you need to if you're interested go to this class or take this you know they uh, they recommended me to go to a, a conference that is called the national association of pastoral musicians we mm -hmm. for short we call it npm it's still alive now mm -hmm. that organization and they told me to go to to the, the conferences for that every year great education to see all these people, thousands of people that also were part of the church, life of the church as music ministers. And I was like, wow, you know, I didn't, I didn't know that there were so many people. So I, I started that walk there, you know, and the, from there studying, studying, starting to study, inquiring with other people who were, like I said, you know, wonderful mentors. You know, Phoenix had a hotbed of great thinkers and musicians at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, when you think of people who came out of here, you know, Tom Booth is from here. Um, uh, Paul Hillebrand is from here, Tim and Julie Smith are, are from here, Matt Marr. Uh, there was also Gary Daigle was here, Rory Cooney is from here, Mark Mellis. I mean, there there is a list of people who are super talented that were ended up being composers for the church. They all were here in Phoenix at that time. So I had wonderful, you know, teachers and people who were ahead of me who showed me the way. So. You know, I was going to give you a hard time about, you know, being a sun devil because I'm a wildcat. Uh, but you know what? Tempe it. did you well, so I'm not going to yeah. say anything. I'm just going to yeah. thank them. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and the U of A should have given you a bigger scholarship. That's, that's all I can right. say. They should have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so but that's how I started, you know, from there I went, I yeah. think I can, you know, I, I came to study engineering and I really oh. quickly found that my vocation, what I really felt passion for was music. So I switched to music yeah. and started studying music and at the same time thinking, you know, I think I could probably lead a group and a lead a church, you know, in music. And so I started thinking of the possibility of being a music minister very early. And I gave a call to the Office of Worship in downtown Phoenix and said, hey, you know, I'm gonna graduate from school really soon and mm -hmm. maybe they, you can give me a position. And they were like, yeah, right. Well, you know, that's not <laughs> yeah. easy. So I hung up the phone thinking, okay, well, that's not gonna happen. But literally 
two or three weeks later, they called and said, there's a new parish in Chandler, Arizona. The, there's a music director in there, but there, her, her husband has just got transferred to San Diego and they're going to move. Can you cover and take pick that up? And I said, sure, I'm not doing anything. And they were just starting. They, they still were in a little building. You know, they were not in their own big building. They were in some office building starting. And, uh, and so I started from scratch with them almost, you know, and just started playing music with them. And from there, I moved into a full-time position at a parish in East Mesa at St. Bridget. And uh, I did 19 years there. So a lot of formation there. And then I did 12 years at Holy Cross Church. And now I'm here in an OLPH in Scottsdale. Oh, gosh. Okay, we want to hear some music here. And oh. Rain Down is one of those songs that we sing at St. Pius. It's so beautiful. And I think at a time like now, we're in a pandemic, and maybe people need to hear hear that again, because we haven't uh, heard it in, in church for a while together in that's person. That's sad, right? I happen to have a guitar here that I was oh. bringing. <laughs> Not that any of this was planned, right, right. Amy? <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll edit that out. Uh, you know, uh, I uh, was changing the guitars, the strings of this guitar. So it's probably a little... Lies a little bit, but we'll, we'll fake it. Okay. So... Rain down, rain down, rain down your love on your people. Rain down, rain down, rain down your love, God. So worthy of trust, God's mercy falls on the just and the right. Full of God's love is the earth. Rain down, rain down. Rain down your love on your people. Rain down, rain down, rain down your love, God of love. Oh, God of creation. All of our hope lies in you. me back to church where you know we haven't been for so long and away from all of our friends and father harry and right so sad. yeah you know seeing um everybody that uh, we've been so close to and praying together so um i thank you jaime for your time today and want the audience to know that there's a part two because we have only learned a little bit about jaime and so um we'll be back next week uh, with that interview and more music. So folks, just uh, don't forget to tune in. 
Uh, we're here with Pious Talk, and uh, my co-host will be uh, Dave Bellamy. Some of you know him. He's a parishioner at St. Pius. We're going to rotate some of our weeks, and so I'll see you next week. Jaime Cortez and Colleen Pera, back Colleen, next nice week. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, everybody. Bless you.